one. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Music Meltdown, in which we are on the 80s Album of the Year series. We've worked our way all the way up at this point to 1986, in which this will be an interesting year. Um, I think it's a slip. I think it's definitely a step down from our previous two, but I still think that the albums at the top of this year are pretty great. Uh, Tavi, any remarks about 86 you got? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, again, I, I don't, don't really have problems with um, this year, um, bunch of great albums, and, um, yeah, <laughs> I don't really know what to say, it's just a uh, lot like most of these years. All righty. That being said, let's kick right into this. I only got one honorable mention for 86, but it's a big one. This is an album that took a long while to grow on me, but I'm I finally get why people love it. And I love it too. The Queen is Dead by the Smiths. Gonna be my runner up here. That being said, my top five albums are up in the shirt. So number five, gonna be Evolve by Sonic Youth. Uh, this is them, still really aggressive, still really kind of post-rocky at points. But this one, you're getting almost like a slight punk infusion. It's a bit more, um, it's a bit more sort of noisy than their first two. I think it's really great, and was a really strong step forward, which we will be talking about them next year for sure. The following record for me, it's going to be "So" by Peter Gabriel, one that I think. Definitely has a strong chance to win for you, or at least will be in, a, in the top five, I would expect. Uh, I love So. I think it's an incredible pop album. Uh, Peter Gabriel's probably my favorite vocals of his ever are on this record. I just think that tracks like Sledgehammer and um, shit. Uh, Sledgehammer is obviously the big hit. It's incredible. And uh, Red Rain, I think, is brilliant. Really, it's a great album. Can't get enough of it. Number three for me is going to be The Color of Spring by Talk Talk. Talk Talk, a band that I don't think either of us actually brought up yet. Um, even in their sort of synth pop era, this is, ah, gotcha, gotcha. This is them kind of breaking away from that, getting a bit more acoustic work in here, but you have some really, really excellent just sort of songwriting chops here. Mark Hollis has such a unique vocal style. And uh, the only real comparison you can make for him, I think, is Brian Ferry. But even then, I don't think it. I don't think it's really there. Uh, I love the writing here. I think the performances are sublime. Just a great album. Number two, most years, this could be my number one. I got Black Celebration by Depeche Mode, which to me is just like a masterclass and sort of this darker synth pop sound. I love the writing. I think that the songs themselves are just incredible. Stuff like Black Celebration, the song is just amazing. I love A Question of Lust. I think this is one of the best sounding albums like ever, in my opinion. I just love the production here. I think that it's a pinnacle of the 80s, really. And uh, the songs don't slack too, and the playing is really strong. But my winner, uh, as much as I like these other albums, this is my only five-star record of the year, and pretty clearly it was going to be my winner. Talked about this band twice, technically three times already. It's going to be Skylarking by XTC. To me, clearly the best XTC record. It's them kind of channeling the Beatles in some sense. And it's just really great stuff. I think um, I think that the songwriting here is the best that they would ever do. Partridge and Mulling really blending together brilliantly. Uh, Rundgren's production style just suits them amazing this is kind of the most that they would ever atone to like the beatles you get so much beatles influence all across here and sort of the melodies and just the uh way that they're going about the song construction tracks like grass and it's it's not on the original record but every time i listen to it i listen to it right after dear god is amazing and really just like every song on here i think mermaid smiled is excellent i love uh you're really super super girl just there isn't a wasted note on the album and for a 14 15 track album that that says a lot i think it's pretty incredible it might be my favorite todd rundgren produced album ever i think that it is just outstanding skylarking by xtc 
nice nice um yeah yeah i, I had um talk talk in my honorable mentions it's my life it was um yeah um yeah I, I i couldn't get into that really cute album but <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> and I'm so surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just some honorable mentions. Um um Anita Baker's Rapture is a great soul album of this year. Um Janet Jackson Control, great pop album. Um, Paul Simon, Craceland. Um, album I want to listen to more. Um, could grow. Um, Tinderbox by Sioxi and the Banshees. Haven't mentioned them myself, but now I'm gonna. Um, yeah. I even like that New Order album a lot, Brotherhood. Um, but yeah, my actual list, uh, number five, is Peter Gabriel. So I actually prefer um, Melt and Security, actually, to this. Yeah, but I do. There's lots of great songs like Red Rain, um, which is my song of the year, I think. And... Sledgehammer is a fun uh, pop, I don't know, number. And In Your Eyes, Mercy Street, Big Time. Um, I, I gotta be honest, um, I'm not as big a fan of We Do What We Are Told. Um, and I, I find uh, Don't Give Up slightly disappointing um yeah it, it has a good message and all but um something about just kind of thinking i would get more with kate bush and peter gabriel collabing but still i like it enough but um yeah um number four it's quite a new discovery i listened to this album with Clay the first time. Shout out to Clay. And it's Queen Strike, Rage for Order. Um, yeah, so <laughs> definitely a album we would listen to with Clay. Uh, big Queen Strike fan. Yeah, like this um heavy metal and just slight prog metal feel to it and uh although the songs aren't long or anything but um 11 songs um i was just very um impressed how many uh, great songs they got into uh, the show that was a, just one slight weird song in the i'm not even sure it was it was gonna get close to you i think was the only that didn't fit but yeah walk in the shadows is awesome i dream in infrared um screaming in di digital killing words lots of awesome metal numbers in this one um yeah cool album then an album i don't think <laughs> not the not a many would have in their top five of the year. Um just very Tavi core. I have Toto Fahrenheit, which is was my favorite um Toto album actually. Um something I just personally love it and listen to this a lot when I got my driver's license and um very lots of ballads in this album. Not not like major rockers in this one actually, but it's more like a pop, just a pop album and but so many 
great melodies in this one. And, um, starting starting with till the end and ending with the uh, Miles Davis um instrumental that is part of and yeah, just a lots of um love the AD sound of it. <laughs> like um so many cool um cool uh, um session players even come here and either sing back back up or just play some part. And but my number two we are going the trash metal the first time I think with Master of Puppets Metallica. Yeah. Again, this um, Metallica albums are I've known since like as I was a kid. Um, I didn't I didn't personally own them, but I listened to them at multiple friends' house, and if many of my friends had this album and some others, and and yeah, it's just a uh, heavy. It's still kind of. They're quite long songs. There's some rock metal feel to them, and um, Orion is just a awesome instrumental featuring the um late um Cliff Burton on bass, and yeah, he definitely was a great bassist, and just Welcome Home Sanitarium is awesome. Um battery master of puppets i i guess i've heard some of these songs so many times that i almost don't need to listen to them but they're still awesome and yeah love love the heaviness of it but my number one is an album you mentioned the queen is dead but smith's yeah I fell in love with this um last year and just um been listening to this a lot and most of these albums that um there's not really anything bad on it. Um my favorites are There's a Light That Never Goes Out. Um I know it's over. Big Mouth Strikes Again. Um, Boy with the Torn Inside and so on. And yeah, it's just the Jungle Bob greatness. Um, I love, I actually love the sound of it and especially the Johnny Morris guitars. I think his acoustic guitars sound really nice and how they blend in. Yeah, yeah. I knew I knew this would be my number one from far ahead, but love the Queen instead. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah, I I like that one a lot. It, it's not a favorite Smiths record. I feel like I'd probably I I take Me as Murder over it. I probably take a lot of different bombs over it as well. Mm. Might take Hat Pool of Hollow. I don't know. We'll see whenever I inevitably do do the Smiths. Because I do like them a lot. Unfortunately, the yeah. Morrissey exists. So that's kind of the issue. Oh, well. <laughs> 86, it's a pretty good year overall. I like it a fair, fair bit. That being said, I hope that you enjoyed all this show. Ah. Shout out your lists down below and give them all a taste. Have a good one. Bye.